Hello classmates, today I'll be talking to you about James Fitzgibbon and his role in the War of 1812. So let's get started. First, I will tell you some background information about him. James Fitzgibbon was born on November 16, 1780 in County Limerick, Ireland. He was Irish. A son of a farmer and a weaver, James Fitzgibbon was a public servant and at the age of 11, he left his home. And at the age of 15, he joined the Knights Glen Yeomanry. This was an army for Ireland to fight off the French. He, since he was fighting really hard in those years that he was enrolled in the army, he was quickly promoted to surgeon. After he was forced to join the army in England, after a couple of years, and after a couple of years, he moved to Canada and lived. Uh, here for most of his life. When the war started, he defended Upper Canada. While defend defending Upper Canada, he was involved in couple in couple of the major battles of War War of the eighteen twelve. For example, Battle of Stony Creek, Beaver Dam, and uh, Looney's Lane. Uh, these battles were a main part of his role in the War of eighteen twelve because he demonstrated skill and strength to fight off the Americans. Now we'll talk to you about what he did in these battles. The Battle of Stony Creek. Gene Fitzgibbon served as a company commander at the Battle of Stony Creek. This was a battle where the Americans captured Fort George at the Niagara frontier. The people living there were treated fairly well, while others were treated really badly by the Americans. Gene Fitzgibbon wanted to do something so that the Americans victory would be painful. So James Fitzgibbon planned a guerrilla style harassment on the American forces. The guerrilla st harassment style was when you go to the enemy from the way they're not expecting it. James Fitzgibbon uh, men wore shirts to camouflage in with the grass and they were uh, and they were on their way to the harassment. This harassment was was taking place on the night when the Americans were asleep. James Fitzgibbon attacked and destroyed the Americans' fire zone, and this is how it ended. At the end, even though the Americans had captured Fort George, they had a little to show for their victory, so the British had won because of James Fitzgibbon. So now I will tell you about what he did in the Battle of Beaver Dam. James Fitzgibbon did not know that 500 Americans had advanced from their base operation, but when Laura II informed James Fitzgibbon about this attack, James Fitzgibbon prepared for what would be an easy victory for the British at Beaver Dam against the American. After James Fitzgibbon planned this attack, a party of 300 Americans attacked from the, from the enclosed wooded section of the trail near Beaver Dam, which is now today's Stone Road, Ontario. They were joined by a hundred Mohawk warriors. After hours of fighting in at shadows, the American forces were ready to surrender. After a couple of minutes, Fitzgibbon arrived with 50 soldiers and his own 49 regiment. This, this was his soldiers, and he was a leader. According to Fitzgibbon, he was able to begin the process of surrender in part. After after Major P. W. D. Heron of the uh, of the 140 Regiment arrived with the large reinforcement that he surrendered was formally reached, and by D. Heron himself. When dust settled, five First Nation chiefs and warriors were killed, said to be killed, and 20 and 25 wounded. The men suffered 20 by dead and um, 50 injured, including command the commander. This is how the Beaver Dam ended. It was quite a rough battle, but at the same time it was easy because James Fitzgibbon got the advance warning. So this is, and this was one of James Fitzgibbon's most, James Fitzgibbon's most successful victory. And that's the So now I'll talk to you about Looney's Lane. James Fitzgibbon served as a soldier. He didn't do much in this, but he, he fighted through the bloody um, battle of Lundy's Lane. So that's all I've got to say for uh, Lundy's Lane.
So if you didn't get what I said throughout the presentation, because maybe a little too fast paced or I don't know, just you didn't hear me. Well, what I was trying to say that his role was to defend Upper Canada, and he did that. And like you know, every major battle he fought for the war of 1812, he won it and he showed skill. And he demonstrated skill. Also, he was widely um, praised for for making 465 American officers served. Also, during the war, he achieved a gold medal by his fellow um, soldiers. In my opinion, I think I think James uh, James Fitzgibbon was the savior of Upper Canada, and without him, today Upper Canada wouldn't be the way it is. And if you wanted to know when he died, he died in December 10th, 1863, London, United Kingdom. Because after the war, he served as a public servant, often employing his name and reputation with the Irish immigrants. He also served as acting general during the rebellion of 1837, which is actually where his actions were key. After, um, James Fitzgibbon returned to England in 1847, after the death of his wife. But he retained a fondness for Canada, the emerging nation he had fought so hard to protect, and home of his greatness success as a soldier. So that's it. That's James Fitzgibbon's role in the War of 1812. I hope you liked it, and I hope you found out that James Fitzgibbon was an important guy for Upper Canada, and without him, today, Canada, Upper Canada wouldn't be the way it is. And in my opinion, James Fitzgibbon was a savior of upper, upper Canada and yeah so that's all I gotta say for my presentation and see you next time. Just a little bit, quite a level it up, jump the boogie, the trickle it